Hi everyone, I'm here with Gillian Jacobs in the Netflix studio. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Gillian stars in Love on Netflix and season two is coming on March 10th. Super exciting. So I'm going to ask her a lot of questions about the panel she was on today, Love season two and everything we can expect. So to get started, earlier you were on a strong women panel, mm -hmm. which is totally fitting for your show. And <laughs> you were there with people from Orange is the New Black, from Ingovernable and a lot of other great series. So. One of the things you said was that you think audiences have already embraced the male anti-hero mm -hmm. and that you want more shows that let women have those flawed, bad decision-making roles. So how do you think that um, Mickey really is that anti-hero? Because I think at the end of the day, her goals are admirable. Yes. She's trying to better herself, but she still has those flaws. She makes a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Yes, she does. And so, you know, <laughs> she's definitely someone who I think is frustrating for viewers to watch because you just sort of want to tell her, don't do that, please don't do that. But um, it's also fun to watch a flawed character, and, and as an actress, it's really exciting to play somebody who is so flawed, making so many mistakes, but really trying hard to get better. So it's, yeah. I think one of the best mistakes we saw in season one was the <laughs> like bottle episode of her stuck on a train with Andy Dick. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of like antics like that we can be? Because I think in season two of just like crazy adventures with random guest stars that we're not expecting. Yeah, we do have some great guest stars. Um, I have a great episode, um, let me think. As soon as you say that, all the names fly straight <laughs> out of my head. But you're gonna see more, like I feel like uh, Bobby Lee, Brett Gelman, um, uh, Paula Pell, who's a legendary SNL yes. writer, plays my boss this season. So it's really fun to explore Mickey's work life and that boss employee dynamic. And um, so yeah, there's a lot more great guest stars coming. And um, Carrie Kinney is you know, on the show who plays my neighbor and friend. And I just think she's an incredible comedic performer and actress. And uh, I've admired her for so long. So it's so great to be on a show with her. Yeah. And I think that um, there's a really good balance between like Mickey and Birdie is like mm -hmm. these two very different kind of women. So what has been like to kind of explore that dynamic and show like these two very different sides of how women's own like insecurities can come out in different ways? Yeah, um, Claudio Doherty, who I think is a brilliant performer and writer, plays Birdie. And she um, is a people pleaser who just wants Mickey to like her. And you just see though, over time, people have their limits. Even Birdie um, finally says like, enough is enough with Mickey. And so it's interesting also for Mickey, I think to have this friendship where at first she takes her for granted, but then when there's the prospect that that person doesn't want to be her friend anymore, she sort of is awakened to the fact of like, her behavior has consequences. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's really fun to, to have that dynamic with Claudia and, um, I relish any opportunity to work with her. Yeah, I think something else that makes love really stand out is it's kind of like an anti rom com mm -hmm. where sometimes it has those elements of like chasing each other and like those traditional rom com elements, but at the same time it's like the total opposite because we see how separately they're both having their own issues. Yes. So, what kind of rom com tropes do you think the show embraces or you want to see it embrace, and which does it like trying to totally reject? Well, I think like certainly the near misses of a rom com are in there, you know, and certainly in the first season where it's like, I set him up with my friend, but I really realized that I like him. That certainly is something I think we've seen in rom-coms. But um, I think uh, just dealing honestly with somebody having addiction issues and coming to terms with the fact that they are an addict, I don't think is something you often see in a rom-com. And I think Paul's character, who is um, a nice guy on the surface, but has a lot of repressed rage. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I don't know how often I've seen that. And um, and I think just like slowing down the pace of the, the relationship, and it's not outside circumstances that get in the way of these two being together, it's their own issues. So I feel like a lot of times in a rom-com, it's some crazy thing that's happened that's preventing them from being together. Um, and this is really just two people who need to work on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's true. People <laughs> need to work on themselves. Well, and the funny thing is season one kind of ended on this like big, strong, romantic yeah. moment, but now we see season two is gonna pick up right where that left off. Yes. So how will kind of that shape Mickey's journey that she's now not like in denial of her issues anymore, yeah. but embracing them, but also now dealing with these feelings for Gus? Yeah. Well, you know, I think for Mickey, it's some sometimes like, uh, she'll, she'll say it out loud. She's realized she's an addict and she needs help but that doesn't mean necessarily that she's gonna um, work on it right away. <laughs> so I think maybe in some part of her brain is she's like, I said it, so I don't have to deal with it. Um, so once again, frustrating character to watch, <laughs> not what I would want my friend to be doing, but it's really enjoyable to play someone who's that confused. Um, but yeah, I think you're gonna see what, what does it mean for these two to actually date each other? 
if season one is them sort of dancing around the notion of being together, what happens when they're together? And I think sometimes in a relationship, you see all the red flags early on and you just choose to ignore them. Mm -hmm. And then they come out, you know, usually you can't ignore it for too long. So I think Mickey and Gus are sort of ignoring the red flags about each other and their own behavior. But it's, it's gonna come back around. Do you think that they're like ultimately right for each other or is this just kind of like? I don't know, I mean, <laughs> it really depends on where they go as people. You know, cause I feel like people can have a bad start to a relationship or have separate issues and really choose to work through it and, and develop a strong relationship. Or sometimes people kind of don't know how to communicate. They don't want to work on themselves. They can be in a relationship for a certain amount of time and then it all kind of blows up. So it'll really depend on, on what they choose to do. Yeah, and the show gives you a lot to do with having to balance those issues, balance the romance, and also balance like the super serious drama of like the addiction, mm -hmm. but then also the comedic moment. So how do you kind of like find that perfect balance? Yeah, I think, you know, going in, I'd been on a sitcom for six years on Community. Mm -hmm. And so I knew the writing was funny and it would be a funny show, but I tried to just play it straight as a performer um, and just let the writing be funny. So. Um, rather than like on a sitcom where maybe you'd lean into the jokes more or really like push that humor, I just tried to be truthful with every all the circumstances of the character and focus on that and knew it would be funny because the writing was funny. And how has this experience been different for you that it's on Netflix rather than um, a network? I, I don't have enough time to tell you all the ways <laughs> in which it's different. I mean, you know. On a, on a network sitcom like Community, you are waiting week to week to find out if you're still going to exist as a show. And we got a two season pickup right off the bat on Love. So I mean, just the um, sense of calm and confidence that that gives to a set, to the writers, to the, to the crew, to the actors, to know that you're going to have a job for two seasons, it makes a world of difference. You know, there's always this set of sense of panic and dread on community. Like, should I pack up my trailer? <laughs> oh God, the numbers came out this morning. I should probably start <laughs> loading stuff into my car. And so Netflix gives you time to find your audience, to find your voice as a show. And um, it's just been such a wonderful change of pace for me. And you guys are actually already picked up for season three. Yes. So to kind of wrap things up, what are you most looking forward to exploring about Mickey now that we, you know, there's a lot of story ahead to tell? Yeah. Um, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Um, I I would love I would love more um, Birdie and Mickey. I I think that that is a really interesting friendship, and I know it's a story that's grounded in this romantic relationship. But I think it's really fun to explore female friendship. So I would love to see more of Vic, uh, Vicky and Mickey. Vicky and Mickey. Yeah. Vicky could be their, their, their ship that's name. Their, that's their <laughs> shipper name. Vicky. Well, you can start shipping it when Love Returns for Season 2 on March 10th. Thank you.